you know, so definitely, again, uh, one of the things I want you to keep in mind there was, a, there was a statement, differentiated people are able to be with their families without being emotionally reactive and can be themselves comfortably with their families. Uh, again, Boeing, Murray Boeing, the outstanding theorist in the area of family therapy, believe that the greater the degree of differentiation of self in regard to one's family of origin, the greater the degree of marital health. I want to really keep that in mind. Uh, Bowen believed that the greater the degree of differentiation of self in regard to one's family of origin, the greater the degree of marital health. And you're going to come across those persons who uh, will continue in their counseling here, uh, especially if they take the course in uh, introduction to family systems are going to become more familiar with this term differentiation of self. It's a very vital term uh, because in all honesty in any kind of interaction that you have be it with your, your family, be it with your, your wife, be it with your congregation, or be it with a group of whatever, you really need to have a sense of who you are and who you belong to. Uh, uh, and that is so important so, and that's why you know it's always uh, good to again to always refer to David uh, uh, prayer or David uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Psalms 139 to the Lord search me O Lord I know my heart try me O Lord and know my thoughts uh, and uh, I ask that uh, uh, when he says uh, in Psalms should be 19th in that area let the meditations of my mouth uh, the words and meditations of my mouth be acceptable in my sight O Lord my uh, strength and my redeemer uh, those things that come out of you you pray that uh, there would be Christ like you know, and acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Uh, again, know who you are. As one lady t- told me that, and I just looked at her, because I didn't understand her concept uh, when she was talking about <clears throat> overhearing a woman talking about her son in a negative way. Her son was in his 20s. Uh, and uh, this lady had just gotten through singing a song that really touched the hearts of everybody uh, in the church. Uh, and um, but the same lady, uh, when she had come was coming out of church, uh, heard another lady gossiping about her son, saying some negative things about her son. And this lady said that, well. I just had to lay my religion down and give this lady a piece of my mind. Now, I don't know how one can do something like that. That bothered me, you know. Uh, it bothered me. You know, it still bothers me as such. You know. And so, therefore, again, you know, uh, get a sense of who you are and who you belong to. Uh, so you don't find yourself reactive or reacting. Find yourself being more proactive uh, in terms of as Jesus looked upon us and suffering for us upon that old ragged cross, said, God forgive them, Father forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that's the perspective that we need to take in knowing who we are in terms of people. Now, there are charts in your book. And, uh, and Olson mentioned using an integrative assessment grid. The council should be able to assess the couple or family on several levels. And we're going to be looking again at these levels on several levels. I want one thing that you want to keep in mind that in, according to this model, this is just one model, 
there are many models of counseling, okay? This is just one model. This is called the Integrative Family Therapy Model by Olson. But with this model, the first place you start with this model is at the problem-solving level. When I present you with cases that I expect you to be able to really assess and then come up with a treatment plan or treatment plans for this, the cases as such, I want you to always keep in mind that you must start at the problem-solving level at all times where you can, uh, where the counselor should be able to describe their problem-solving capabilities, the couples or the families problem solving capabilities okay so I always start there then you move on when you see that they might be struggling in that area uh, and not having good problem solving skills that you might have to teach them uh, then you move to the structural the, the, the next really level should be the inter interactional level where you're looking in terms of communication uh, and just see what's going on there in terms of how uh, the couple communicate. Uh, it's kind of like looking at meta communication, seeing how uh, uh, one uh, is to uh, communicate about communication as such. So that next level, after problem solving level, might be that interactional level. But now, the next level that you might come to after interactional level or at the problem solving level, it might be the structural level, where you're looking in terms of boundaries, or how families uh, set boundaries, or, or how uh, look at hierarchies, hierarchies in terms of uh, where is the power in the family as such. You know, uh, of course, the, the charts give you a little bit more detailed information, uh, but the way I look at things, I'll bring you more close to home in terms of some actual experiences that I've had as such in terms of talking with these. Uh, so the structural is the next. And then, uh, because structural problems, interactional problems uh, can make problem solving impossible. It can make problem solving impossible. And so therefore, that's why when you're doing assessing, you're assessing in the area of interaction, assessing is in the area of structural, what it might be, so you can know what might be blocking or interfering with this couple being able to resolve the problem, a problem that they're trying to come to counselor and work with. The counselor should be able to identify and formulate a cognitive profile that spells out key belief systems and thinking styles which in turn support problematic structures or interactional styles. In other words, uh, that other level that you're going to be looking at uh, after the interaction or the structure will be the cognitive level, okay? Uh, and you want to see, uh, get a sense of that, of each person's belief system and how they, uh, what they're, and some, some, sometimes irrational thinking about how a marriage should be or what a marriage should be and so forth and so on. Person's thinking style. And the person's thinking style uh, many times have an impact in terms of whether they can, again, solve that problem or not. Uh, and, uh, and so, therefore, but when you have, <clears throat> you also, uh, it says, simply stated, as, as they grow up, people learn to view relationships by observing how members of their families relate to each other. That's what we're looking at family of origin next. Uh, the cognitive, now we're looking at the family of origin material. Uh, people grow up uh, 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 learning how to view or view relationship by observing how members of their families relate to each other. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I've always been very observant in terms of how members of my family not only related to me, but also how they related to one another. My problem was at that time, uh, being a young person, uh, making suggestions to adults in terms of what I observed in terms of the way that they interacted to one, to, with one another, in my opinion at that time, was not as Jesus wanted us to do. Uh, they would tell me to go and shut up. You know? 
or be willing to kind of slap me upside my head, they would call it, you know. And so therefore, uh, they would uh, pretty much uh, kind of dismiss me and uh, tell me that uh, you just just be quiet, uh, just shut up. Uh, and uh, but I saw uh, certain interactions uh, in my family as such that was very disturbing, and uh, and I knew uh, that, that it can lead to some bad consequences. Uh, for the persons involved, uh, which eventually it did. Uh, and uh, so therefore, uh, we do learn uh, about uh, view relationships in terms of how we observe our family members, how our family members relate to one another. Now, part of understanding the multi-generation transmission relational patterns is also understanding from the framework of object relation theory how one internalizes these internal relationships and primary parental figures as one grows up. You know, each one of us, in some form or fashion, have some uh, image of our significant uh, persons in our lives, in terms of our fathers, our mothers, or what it might be. We've internalized some, some, something here in terms of how we really uh, view our uh, uh, that parent, uh, uh, that significant other. Uh, significant family member in our lives is here someplace and many times it, it's at a, uh, a subconscious unconscious level where we don't know how it might be impacting our present relationships especially our marital relationships as such um, these internalizations become mass by which unconsciously uh, one's unconsciously picks a mate and at times, source a great deal of projection and transference. And those are two interesting words. You know, uh, what is it many times, you know, when we end up picking our mates? And that's why I'm learning uh, to really always depend on Proverbs 3.5. Uh, always, but many others, other, uh, many other uh, words of God, God's word. But it's so important for me to always meditate and, and, and just keep this in mind at all times Proverbs 3, 3, 5 where you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path that is so vital for me uh, so vital for me uh, why? because many times even without my being aware of it uh, yes there are some decisions that I might make uh, uh, that might end up not being good for me, but it might be made according to those persons, significant persons in my life uh, that I've had interaction with or I carry around in here, uh, not being aware of how my interaction with them play a part in my choosing a mate or making a certain kind of, uh, choosing certain sort of relationships as such. Uh, and um, so therefore, uh, the object relation theory or the last one that we looked at uh, definitely uh, is something we have to look at now projection and transference and these are interesting words here transference in this context refers to the way couples unconsciously shift their feelings and unresolved issues to their spouse and try to resolve them in that context um and try to resolve them in that context. How they shift their feelings and unresolved issues to their spouse and try to resolve them in that context, in the marital context as such. Uh, there are situations where uh, persons uh, who have come to me uh, and have talked to me and the spouse is very confused in terms of what is going on here uh, but in the process of the person talking to me is that there are a lot of individuals who are uh, who have committed their lives to Christ who love the Lord you know who are active in the church what it might be but they've come to me and have talked to me about some things that happened to them uh, when they were growing up uh, uh, some of them have talked to me about being physically abused. 
some of the some of the men have talked to me about being sexually abused, you know, by uh, uh, a member of the family, about their own father, uh, what it might be. They talk to me about that. Uh, they have have been very discouraged about what's wrong with me, that I can't seem to stay married. Uh, this is my third time, or this is my fifth time. Uh, 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 marrying here uh, they say um, uh, husband what is wrong with my wife here uh, we are uh, we, 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 we have the uh, the front of being a good couple what it might be but she's unresponsive to me uh, she finds me sometimes she doesn't even want me to touch her at times what is going on here I don't understand what's going on here and then many times you know I have uh, the wife tell me that well you know I thought that maybe by this through this marriage I might be able to get over the trauma that I experienced from my dad touching me inappropriately for so many years I thought that I'd be able to get over the trauma you know of this as such you know uh, by the marriage you know trying to work through it through the marriage as such you know but it just so happened that every time you know, my husband would touch me, and of course this was new information for, for the husband, every time he would touch me, the way he would touch me would remind me of how my dad used to touch me inappropriately. And I just couldn't stand it, I just have to just pull back as such. You know? And those are some of the things that we have to really work with, work on as such. Uh, there are persons going through many marriages because of some unresolved stuff, you know, uh, the transference that took place uh, uh, on the spouse or the partner uh, of unresolved stuff uh, uh, from their early experience as such. Uh, and so therefore that word transference is one that you have to really uh, keep in mind and really uh, 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 kind of, and even in a counseling session, be, be, be aware of this. And this is where a lot of ministers uh, are finding themselves falling down, finding themselves uh, falling away from what God wants them to do, falling away from what they know is right. Uh, the process of transference can take place in terms of, uh, of a minister, and that's why I don't, you have to wonder about, you uh, look at when you have a male uh, counseling a female. A female being a male, you have to look at that dynamic and be very careful about that. Very careful about that. <clears throat> because there are situations where they're not aware of this transference concept, okay? And before you know it, uh, that female, uh, some un that, that love that uh, they wanted so much from that dad that they did not get, uh, that, that intimacy that they wanted so much from the dad that they not, did not get, they find themselves transferring that unresolved love that they did not get on that pastor, a minister that's counseling them. You know, you know, and they start to having certain feelings toward that male as such. Uh, feelings that basically are not appropriate, really. You know, and the, but the counter-transference start taking place, too. When that starts happening, that, that, that minister doesn't understand there's a counter-transference and where he started seeing that young, that person as someone that uh, uh, there's some unresolved stuff in his own life in terms of his marriage, what it might be. And so therefore, he starts transferring his, the feeling that he's not getting of intimacy or what it might be to that person. And before you know it, they're involved you know, in a uh, relationship that is not appropriate in the eyes of man nor in the eyes of God. <clears throat> uh, and so, therefore, uh, many of persons have found themselves hurting uh, families and, and hurting the, the loved ones uh, because of this kind of dynamics that they're not aware of. You know, uh, thinking that just because I'm a minister or a pastor, what it might be, I can do this. No, uh, uh, you're assuming only the Holy Spirit of God can do this. And God will tell you that there are some things you better leave alone. You know, 
there are some per there you need to refer some other place okay kids will transfer certain things onto you yeah. uh, there are kids who are looking there's one one kid saw this guy that had a beard and almost had a fit uh, it's, 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 it's caused a bad experience with a man with a Van Dyke as such you know. uh, and uh, it was just, just, just was just scared you know, as such so uh, that word transference I could talk about it all night but just keep in mind again as in this context refers to the way couples unconsciously ship their feelings and unresolved issues to their spouse and try to resolve them in that context within the marital context uh, okay now the other word is uh, uh, projection uh, what we call projective identification which involves one spouse projecting unwanted and unacceptable parts of the self on the other who then collides with the projection and acts it out finally by observing these transferences and projecting projection the council begins to understand the, uh, the, the individual developmental issues that each individual must resolve in the context of couples work so the projection sometimes uh, take place in terms of uh, it's a defense mechanism that goes way back really and have you ever, I don't know whether you, but I have had person who have come to me and made statements of how I was feeling, or how, what I was doing that were not true. Uh, I've heard uh, uh, a couple, the, 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 the husband, uh, telling the wife that you are always angry, you're in a bad mood all the time, and I don't know why that you're so angry all the time. And the wife is saying, me being angry all the time? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm not. What you're, what, you're, what you're talking about here, you know? Uh, uh, and when she think about it, uh, she really thought about it, she would find out that the husband is really projecting. He is really the one that's feeling the anger. He's the one that's really in a bad mood. Uh, but he finds this to be unacceptable uh, in terms of himself, so therefore he puts it on the wife. Uh, as such and so watch that dynamic sometimes in terms of that happening in your in relationships uh, that transference or the dynamic of projection think about it listen very carefully uh, to how people make statements to you uh, uh, um, how statements are being made uh, because sometimes transference might be taking place and sometimes projection might be taking place Somebody coming, you come right in the house, and before you know it, uh, uh, the, the husband might be asking the wife, or the wife might be asking, asking the husband, well, why are you looking so angry? Uh, why are you looking so, 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 uh, why are you looking so angry and upset and all this other stuff, you know? Uh, Starting, you, you come in, I'm just coming in, I'm tired, <laughs> been, been dealing with, with a group of people, you know, <laughs> been dealing with some crises. <laughs> what it might be and now you're, you're saying well, it could be very well that wife might be projecting on you or that husband might be projecting their own uh, unacceptable uh, feelings upon you as such so you have to have heads up on that now again we want to keep in mind uh, when it come down to we're going to look at we're looking, we've looked at integrative uh, assessment uh, so you have to make an assessment and find out what's going on before you can do before you start the acting on what's happening okay now again this is going to be repetition but when you get the case I want you to really know how to go about this now we're looking at treatment now again as integrative assessment starts at the problem level problem solving level integrative treatment problem it starts at the problem solving level okay uh, uh, the first step in building a treatment plan, and I hope I can give an example of one, bring one to you, is to work with a couple of family on problem solving skills in reference to their presenting problems. Now, what did I say presenting problem is? Is that problem that a couple of family comes in and says, this is the problem? Be they say, my husband is the problem? Uh, be they say that my adolescent son or daughter is the problem? Uh, but the presenting problem because the presenting problem because 
uh, this is what they're saying is a problem, but it might not be the actual problem. Okay, so that's what we call the presenting problem. Okay, but uh, but this is where the, again at the treatment level it starts at the problem solving level, uh, and uh, here uh, the focus is on treatment. Now we might be getting a little hot in here, so we might want to cut some of those off. Now, as part of, of treatment, problem solving uses a clear set of treatment techniques. Keep this in mind uh, in terms of treatment. Now, we're looking at treatment now, not assessment. We've done the assessment now. We're looking at the treatment part. It begins by attempting to list the problems that the couple or family believes are central. That means they are going to be listing some things that they believe are very important to be looked at. The counselor then works with a couple of family to define the problem in clear, specific behavioral terms. This is called partializing the problem. That word, partializing the problem. That is where the council works with a couple of family uh, to get them to define the problem that they say that they have in clear, specific behavioral terms. This is called partializing the problem. Now, many clients generalize their problems in a statement like, we can't communicate. I mentioned that before. Which says little about their specific problems. So we can't communicate. Now, if you just let it stay with that, then you, you are not going to be of much help to the persons. Uh, uh, their perception of a problem in general terms may leave them feeling overwhelmed, discouraged, and hopeless. For they're saying we can't communicate, they can be feeling very overwhelmed, discouraged, and hopeless. But if the counselor can help them break down their communication problem into a more specific statement, such as we have a hard time talking about parenting without fighting, uh, then the counselor can target specific problem solving strategies, which, if successful, may help rekindle hope. We have a hard time talking about parenting without fighting. That is being more specific. And by being more specific, then you can help the person start to problem, uh, forming problem-solving uh, strategies. Uh, but in some cases, as Olson mentioned, some clients have difficulty even listing the problems of a marriage or family. Uh, many family counseling sessions begin with one or both parents responding dogmatically to a counselor's question about the problem that led them to seek counseling. They can come and they can have an attitude sometimes uh, and turn to, well, for goodness sake, you started asking them questions about the counselor it might be. Well, how's, how are we to know? You're the counselor. You're supposed to know. Uh, uh, and there are some persons who come in with some attitudes uh, that you have to definitely be prayed up, you know, very patient, very understanding, uh, because they might start to, uh, directing their anger towards you uh, in terms of you're supposed to know it because you're the counselor. Uh, and so don't be asking us this, uh, what it might be, because you, you need to be doing it. Uh, many couples begin marriage counsel by each spouse to find the problem as the other spouse. They cast the counselor in the role of referee who decides which spouse has a problem and needs fixing. It's another situation you don't want to get yourself in. Uh, a situation where one of the spouses, uh, each, each one is blaming the other one. I've had many situations where, you know, the husband is saying, oh, no, I have a problem. It's, it's my wife. She's the one that really needs the counseling here. You know? Or one lady said, I ah, know it's not, it's not me. That's my husband here. Uh, he's the one that definitely needs to be have counseling. Now he turns around and says, "No, nah, you're the one that needs counseling." She said, "No, nah, I don't need any counseling because I'm going to divorce you anyway." Uh, uh, and uh, and I have to make it very clear that in terms of my position, I do not counsel f and t for divorce. I counsel for reconciliation. Uh, but this lady was very clear in her mind, really. Uh, when the blaming going back and forth uh, that she was going to divorce uh, her minister husband, uh, which she did do. 
she followed through with it. She divorced him, you know. And of course, he said that she divorced uh, him because uh, her pastor told her to. And, uh, and he still felt that he did not leave needing the counseling that uh, uh, the wife, that <laughs> her ex-wife now, was the one that needed the counseling. Uh, but when it came down to really some one-to-one work with this individual, I really found out that he did need counseling. He really did. Uh, and it's something now, as God has worked with him in his heart, he now has come to the recognition that yes, you know, I've had some, I had problems, I have problems with my be, and I definitely found out I needed counseling and started working. Uh, on it now many couples so therefore there's a blaming but you don't want to get in there as a referee you don't want to get triangulated between the both because they're not trying to get you on their side against the other spouse Uh, and now how can you avoid something of that nature how can you avoid we have two couples going after one another blaming each other uh, saying that you're the one that's got the problem Uh, no no you're the one that's got the problem how can you really not find yourself getting in there, uh, being put in that position of being a referee? Uh, especially when they ask you, then who do you think has got the problem? No. Uh, who do you think has the problem? I must say, a couple of counseling, in all honesty, American counseling is one of the most challenging uh, uh, form of counseling, especially the counseling Christians. It's very challenging. You know, it is not something that you go in with uh, just with a la-da-da attitude. You need to go into this with prayer. I mean, it's much prayer, you know, and the Word of God all in you with the Holy Spirit of God just leading you. It is not something that is easy you know, because in all honesty, you might find yourself not recognizing it, uh, being more of a referee than a counselor. Uh, and one of the ways that I always say, well, you know, I get them out of the blaming part by having them reflecting back on when they first met and how they perceived one another when they first met. I get them out of the blaming sort of deal. Another thing I do is saying, well, the thing that I'm sensing is that both of you are hurting. Uh, and so, therefore, if you don't mind, I would like to work uh, in terms of work with the both of you not hurting anymore. Okay. And so, therefore, you have to really, uh, with the Spirit of God moving in you, uh, learn how not to get in that kind of position of being the referee when the blaming starts as such. Um, in any case, the role of the counselor is to reframe the problem so that the client sees see it not as an individual one, but as a couple of family problems or an interaction problem. This task is easier to say it than done, which I just said. You know, you've got to frame you have to learn how to frame certain kinds of statements that are coming from uh, the persons who are in conflict in terms of marriage or even a family. You have to learn how to frame it in such a way that you are not going to find yourself insulting uh, each one of the persons or both of them. Find yourself uh, being, being judgmental in terms of one of the persons. Find yourself not taking the sides in terms of one person. And so, therefore, you have to learn how to frame things, frame statements that are being made in a way uh, that's going to be okay. You know? And that's why when I learn how to frame the statement, when one hurts, both hurts. When one hurts, all hurt. Okay? You have to frame it in that way so that one person won't be put on the spot uh, as the one who's got the problem as such. So, therefore, the framing is very important. important. Uh, uh, so, therefore, uh, how the problem is defined and put forward is of the most importance. If problems are not put in, in an actual interaction or frame where they can be solved, then treatment will be far more uh, than difficult. And, again, again, you've got to frame it in a certain way, and then you've got to get a clarification in terms of what they mean by problems, communi- problems communicating, uh, and so it takes a lot of heads up. <clears throat> uh, this is not for the, the person who is into self, uh, 
Uh, it's not for the person who's coming into a, a situation and they're worried about their own uh, problems that they're having themselves. Uh, it's not for the person who are, is so puffed up with themselves they think that they all they have to do is do a certain deal and things are going to be resolved. No. Uh, this is for an individual uh, here uh, in terms of counseling who have completely humbled themselves to the Lord and said, Lord, I can't do it without you. I can't do it without the leading of your Holy Spirit. And I'm not going to assume that I know anything. I know nothing without your help in terms of the Holy Spirit. I know nothing uh, at all, and I need your help. Uh, and when you have that kind of position, take that kind of position, then that's when the Holy Spirit of God will definitely come in as your leader and as your guide and helping you to help these people. Uh, in terms of that. I'm certain that this pastor, I don't know what the dynamics that happened in that counseling session. They've, had, they've been having some counseling sessions, but when two couple comes out of a counseling session and each draw their gun and shoot one another, you know something has happened there that's not good. You know something that's happened there is not good. And the policeman said it's good, but they were bad. Sh they couldn't shoot well because if they could, they would have killed one another. Uh, uh, but again I just came out of that counseling session with the minister as such and so therefore again it's the way you, 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 you frame the situation uh, in terms of dealing with uh, the problems that are brought to you as such uh, and so it's the way you frame it because I don't want to hear from the mouth of a deacon uh, like I've heard a deacon is what it might be that I don't want to go and talk to my pastor anymore with my wife because my pastor's always taking my wife's side. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. I don't want to hear from the mouth of somebody, uh, one of the, uh, the Christian men uh, in uh, the congregation to say, well, I'll never go to my, <clears throat> and talk to my pastor anymore, uh, me and my wife, because my pastor was trying to uh, make a, a hit on my wife more so than help us resolve our marital conflicts. You know, I don't want to hear those kinds of things. Those kinds of things are something uh, that uh, is not acceptable uh, uh, in terms of uh, sight of God and not acceptable, period. Uh, and so therefore, again, you have to really learn how to frame situations, learn how to really listen very carefully and of course learn how to be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God uh, and not think that your brain is going to be able to solve or resolve, or resolve anything uh, many times don't even be trying to think about how you're going to answer as such uh, how you're going to, what it might be yeah you can form assessment in terms of what might be going on but don't be trying to frame in your mind how you're going to answer this or make an answer that, no you, know, you just let things flow and as God gives you wisdom, then you, you, can, you can see what is what. Question, ask, let things flow. And uh, so, so as God's Holy Spirit can start to really um, uh, uh, working with you. Now, one area here that Olson talks about in terms of problem solving relies both on in-session and out-session tasks. Uh, in session tasks focus on what the client can do during the session to help relieve the problem now I've done that in terms of some things we've done I've told persons that come to me for counseling that there are some things that I would be ha I would have you to do while in a counseling session okay uh, uh, also uh, uh, the, uh, the thing that happens sometimes is that you have to be very careful we have out of session tasks for persons to do. Uh, heads up on that. Uh, uh, when you even suggest something like out of session or homework, because there are some persons that you mention out of session stuff or homework, which they have told me that that's an insult to them because you're acting and treating them as if they're kids. Okay, so you have to have heads up on that. Okay, now there are persons who are receptive to that, okay? And that would be good if they are. You know. uh, they are most persons, you're going to find the majority of people uh, have nothing, no problem with it. Now, don't call it homework, because that reminds you of old school stuff, okay? 
uh, but there are some persons, the majority of people that I've had uh, to do things, you know, after they've left the, the counseling session, where I've framed it, I've had no problems. You know, but you have to be very careful the way you frame it in terms of outside. Uh, now, be very, now, what do you do in terms of when you, uh, the, the couple is talking about the problem in the session as such, in terms of problem solving? Well, for goodness sakes, if I saw uh, a husband and wife sitting uh, um, uh, next to one another, uh, apart from one another, and talking primarily to me about the other, uh, that doesn't work for me. Uh, I have them talk to each other. So that's your wife, that's your husband, okay? And I have them talk to one another. Talk to your wife, okay? Talk to your husband, okay? Uh, and not talk about them to me. That could be a stranger in a way, yeah. okay? And so I have them talk to one another. That's very important. Uh, uh, I have uh, them look in terms of, of what uh, some of the things, of course, this situation where I had, uh, it's been, I've related this many times, the Holy Spirit of God that I was resistant to uh, had me have them write down what they each needed to do to keep the marriage together. Uh, of course, I was resistant to that. Uh, and, of course, uh, God had to straighten me out again, you know. And so uh, many times God has straightened me out. I don't know about other counselors or other folks. You might be perfect, but I'm not, okay. Uh, and, uh, and so, therefore, many times uh, God has had to really say, now you need to obey and follow what my spirit put upon your heart, not what your mind says makes sense or not, you uh, uh, because he said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You know, as high as the heaven from the earth, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. You know, and God means that, you know. God works in mysterious ways and is oneness to perform. That's a reality. And so, therefore, uh, my carnal mind, my so-called uh, mind logic, what it might be, has interfered many times. Because you know, when the Holy Spirit put something on my heart to do, you know, the old mind would say, oh, it doesn't make much sense. Now, you know, good and well, that's an insult to the Lord. Uh, uh, and really, in all honesty, and I had to, and I, 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 I humbly submitted to God to do what I had to do with this couple in session in terms of putting down what they need to do in order to keep their marriage together. Uh, I had to have them sign their signature then I sign my signature and I said God is our witness uh, to that and after I'd done that uh, not something I generally do it didn't make much sense to me you know, uh, but I was obedient to the spirit of God and that's when the lady could not move at all the next day out of her bed that's when the husband said she, she can't, she, she's, she's confined. She can't even move out of the bed anymore. And I said, well, Lord, what happened here? Because yeah, I need to know. So I called and talked with her. I said, that, would you mind letting your husband uh, bring you over to the counseling office? Uh, and she said, yeah, I can, I, I'll, I'll come. And she came. And she came just dragging and looking very depressed and looking down. You know, and really just her countenance was that of sadness. And I was I prayed, prayed up. I was, I was obedient to the God spirit. And what God has you to do is never wrong. Uh, it's never wrong. Yeah. It's not. And so when she sat down, I asked her that I'm very confused. Uh, of what is it all of a sudden that you can't get out of bed? That you're looking sad and down at this period in time. Was it because I had you sign uh, a contract in terms of how you can keep your marriage together? And she snapped out of it uh, quickly. He just snapped out of it. Now I said, now what happened to this lady that I knew as all oh, glory and hallelujah to the Lord? You know, 
uh, and, and praises to God and so forth and so on. What happened? Because all of a sudden she snapped out of it and said, well, the thing about it is that I don't want to be married to him and I never wanted to be married to him. And she just changed, I mean, like this. You know, uh, to uh, an arrogant, stubborn, uh, just cold-hearted uh, person. Uh, and uh, said that, no, uh, I don't want to be mad at this man here. And the man just broke down and started crying. He said, I just feel like somebody just, just killed me. No. He said, I just feel like dying. Uh, uh, he didn't want to hear what I felt like doing. You know, I felt like going on my knees to the Lord and said, Lord, please forgive me for being such a foolish person. You know, I said that this, you had me do this because you knew what was going on. And I didn't have a clue. You know, and, I, and now I follow what you wanted me to do, and now it has come out. You know, she was masking all this under Scripture, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, and so forth and so on. Uh, and, uh, and I was really just being impressed by that. Uh, and I tell you, uh, she just shut down on me as well as the husband. I said, hey, I'm going to divorce him. Divorce him. Divorce you. And that's all. And she did. She did. She dropped out of the counseling she divorced him, and he, I uh, had to, he was in crisis. At the very time, in crisis, and I had to start working with him right then and there. Because I, at the time, at that time, he had gone into a depression where he was really uh, thinking about killing himself. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was thinking about killing himself, and he had the means to do it. Uh, and uh, and that's when I really had to get into my crisis counseling mode, you know, with God always, and really work with this man. <clears throat> and I think the thing that really brought him out not only with God, because I did not do it, you know, I just offered him someone who would walk along with him through this valley of depression and this 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 hurt as such, you know. Uh, but I knew that the Holy Spirit of God is the one that could only bring him through it. But the thing that brought, I brought to his mind is that, okay, I know that you said that you, you're not as, well, earlier that you weren't as religious as your wife, uh, that you were just learning. Uh, the one thing I want you to keep in mind is that you got a two-year-old son. You got a two-year-old son that needs a father. You got a two-year-old son that needs a father. You got a beautiful son because you brought him in. You know? And then I talked with him. I was available for him, what it might be. And he eventually slap, uh, starts uh, snapping out of it. Uh, but the thing about it is that he eventually, she eventually went back and started creating a lot of problems for him as such, uh, tearing up the house and everything else. Uh, but again, I worked with him in terms of... But that writing down in that session a contract sign it me as a witness her as a witness found the Holy Spirit of God this came out if I had not obeyed God's spirit no telling what would have happened we would have been going on and 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 never really coming to what really uh, need to be looked at as such and so therefore even when you have them do certain in session tasks sometimes and many times in my case, you know, I always look to the Lord in terms of giving me instruction, but it might be what I need to do. In terms of that one lady I, I had, she was really uh, devastated, a Christian lady, by uh, her Christian husband, uh, a very uh, outstanding uh, in his area of work, uh, and she was devastated. Uh, by uh, his just coming in one day and just saying, I am divorcing you. She did not believe in divorce. Uh, she helped him get through school. 
she helped him get those high degrees that he had, you know. Uh, she went on and got her master's at the same time, but she helped him uh, get those degrees and what it might be. And then after two children uh, that she gladly, you know, had with him, uh, he's going to come and tell her that he no longer wants to be married to her, he no longer loves her, and she's finding out that he's fooling around with another woman. Uh, she was devastated. Uh, why God did this to her? You know? She was devastated because she had in her own mind that uh, uh, when they get established, that things were going to be nice. She would have a nice home and this and that, you know. And all of a sudden, boom. And not only that, that was so devastating for her is that he had impregnated this woman at the same time. You know? But in the process of working with her, Knowing and keeping her focus in terms of God has never left you. God is too kind of God to do something that's nature to you. Okay, this is not God. No, but let me show you what God can do. Are you willing to work with me? Let me show you what God can do. And one of the things that I found out that she liked, enjoyed, uh, this what to verse from person to person. She was a person that enjoyed having assignments given to her. She really relished her being given assignments. I gave a lot of scripture to, to study and to do. She loved that. But she also loved certain sort of readings that she had to do. And now the Holy Spirit brought that to me. You know, I did not know that. But she was that sort of person that told me later on, oh, I just love not only the, the word of God, the scriptures that you gave to me that came from the Lord, but also how you assign things for me to do. Yeah. And so therefore, persons vary in a way. There are some who like these kind, and what it might be, uh, and, so, you know, and there are persons who might become offended by it. You know. There are persons that you have new contracts with, uh, God have you do it, can, 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 can bring out a lot of things you wouldn't ever think come out in terms of marriage or couple counseling, you know. Uh, and so, therefore, heads up, heads up, uh, uh, what you in this area, what you this also is talking about, is some useful information, <clears throat> very useful information, uh, in terms of heads up about things. Now, we're still at the problem-solving level, the end session, you know, stuff they need to do out of a session if the Spirit of God that they need to do in terms of resolving the problem. If they can resolve the problem at that problem solving level, treatment level, you finish. It's short term. It's short term. You can do some follow up later on, you know, uh, as such. And just see how things are going. Uh, but if not, they're struggling, some problems, then we got to move to another level. And we'll take that up the next time in terms of treatment now. We're on the treatment part. We did the assessment part. Now we're on the treatment part. Again, so the problem solving. And then we'll, 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 we'll go to the other levels and talk about the other levels uh, next session.